Welcome to another Sunday in lockdown. Strange times these for all of us. Uh, we ought to be in our churches uh, back by now, uh, but we're not. And anything you can do to agitate in your own local church to get the church building open so people can at least come and pray, socially distance, of course. Uh, but so many people are out walking and have nowhere to go because restaurants and cafes and pubs and things are not open. Um, and many people have told me, uh, people who have no faith at all, uh, they've been wondering why the buildings are closed. Some of them are quite anxious and we quite like a quiet place to pray. So we're an essential service, just like a supermarket. Of course, we believe far more important than physical food is spiritual food. Um, so let's keep praying and agitating to get our buildings open. But in the meantime, you'll be meeting today, no doubt, uh, Zooming or some sort of internet service, thinking about uh, Christian things on this Lord's Day. What a great thing to do. Here's a story about the Acts of the Apostles lockdown that uh, Paul and Silas endured. Uh, we've thought about this story before, Acts 16.31, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, thinking about salvation. But I want to look at the bit before that in the passage and talk about joy in lockdown. These are frustrating times. For many people, it seems to be going on and on and on. They still haven't seen their children and grandchildren. They still haven't hugged them. They still haven't had friends in the house. When is this thing going to end? So frustration's building and uh, people are less and less confident in uh, government pronouncements, both here in the UK and around the world. So how can we be joyful in these difficult circumstances? Well, here's Paul and Silas, uh, frankly, in a lockdown that makes ours look uh, quite easy, really. Acts 16. Paul and Silas have done a brilliant thing in delivering uh, a poor slave girl, uh, possessed of an evil spirit, abused by her owners. Of course, when she's freed from that influence, the owners are mad because their money-making machine has gone. They don't care really about the woman's well-being, clearly, just their lack of cash coming in. Cash flow is always more important to these people uh, than the health and well-being of their employees. So they're thrown into prison after an angry mob demands it. Not only in prison, in stocks and chains, pretty uncomfortable. And yet we see evidence of joy in this lockdown situation, in this confinement, in this containment, in this really bad prison thing. Makes what most of us are going through seem particularly easy. So there they are. After they'd been severely flogged, this is Acts 16.23, horrible thing that would have been, they were thrown into prison and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. And on receiving these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in stocks, an uncomfortable position to be placed in. But about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the other prisoners were listening to them. And we know that the story continues with uh, an earthquake and them being set free. Very exciting story. But here they are, beaten, frightened, imprisoned, unjustly, in an inner jail, dark, no doubt, miserable, cold, perhaps, in stocks, their feet bound. Uh, this is not a recipe for joy. This is not a recipe for excitement. This is not a recipe for, isn't this a wonderful time? And yet still their focus is on praising God. Uh, lockdown is a time in which it's very easy for our mental health to be challenged and for us to become discouraged, depressed even. Uh, there are a range of reasons for that. Uh, our whole way of life has become uh, broken. The structure which we rely on for order has been shifted. People in lockdown situations can easily, and, and I've noticed this happening in some, lose any sense of perspective and control in their lives. What day is it now? Is it the weekend? Is it a bank holiday? Is it, who cares? All days seem to be the same and merge into one another. So it's important to maintain our joy, and we can be helped in that by having some kind of structure in our life. 
to make sure that our habits of personal cleanliness, our washing, something as simple as that, continues unabated. That we get up at the same time and that we get dressed and that we eat healthily and that we have some kind of rhythm to the day which involves us with a focus that our lives are not just completely all over the place waiting in increasing discouragement for this whole thing to end. So what were they doing? They weren't just cheering each other up in this prison cell. Their focus was on singing hymns and praising God. Interestingly, their focus was outside themselves. So what's the secret of joy in lockdown? Well, it, it's three uh, focuses really, isn't it? It's a focus on God, on this being far greater than ourselves, the God who's not been surprised by the virus or by lockdown, the God who isn't taken by surprise by human and earthly events, that there is a meaning to life beyond our own understanding of it. Thank God for that. A God who can be met in prayer, in the Bible, in conversation with other Christians, uh, in looking beyond ourselves, outside our own needs. Uh, we know that mental health issues are exacerbated if you just continuously focus in on yourself. Things just get worse and darker and deeper and we get further into ourselves. It's not a recipe for a healthy, joyful life. So a focus on God and then secondly, focus on other people. Really to proactively say whatever our circumstances are, who else is there to care for? who's more isolated than we are, who's more sick than we are, who's more frightened than we are, who's suffering more than we are. There are people around us with great need here and, of course, massively in the developing world overseas. Who could we write an email to to encourage? Who could we pick up the phone to uh, to make sure that they were doing OK? Who could we send a snail mail letter for an older person perhaps to get in the post and to open it and it wouldn't be a circular or somebody selling something, but a card or letter of encouragement. We could think about others. And that brings them joy and us too, as we're the givers of joy. And thirdly, we should think about ourselves. We should make sure that our disciplines, as we spoke about earlier, are kept in place and are good and wholesome and healthy. We better look after ourselves well in this time of lockdown. We don't want to emerge out the other end with our personal habits all blown out of the water, with our weight dramatically increased, our fitness levels deeply reduced, our general sense of physical and mental health gone. No, we need to look after ourselves. So thank God for this story in Acts, this focus on praising God on this Lord's Day, this Sunday, we can do that, thank God for his presence, for the salvation we can have in Jesus Christ as he transforms our lives on the presence of the Holy Spirit living within us. Then we can focus on other people. And as we do that and we forget ourselves for a while, uh, interestingly enough, the less we think about ourselves, the more likely we are to be healthy mentally rather than absorbed with our own problems. And but thirdly, as we do think about ourselves, let's think about those habits which create health those habits which normalise life and those habits which, to come full circle, turn our hearts back to God in praise and thanksgiving for food, for shelter, for all the things that even in lockdown we have, that Paul and Silas certainly didn't have, that we can praise God for every day. Joy in lockdown. May joy be yours today.